This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends. Appropriate decision making is an extremely important skill and an attribute which every surgeon has to develop and master. Taking the right call at the right time does prevent a lot of intraoperative complications and helps us to sail through safely in certain very tricky situations. And this surgical video demonstrates one such incident. At the end, I will be my own critique and try to analyze what I did right and how different I could have done if I had got a second chance. This is a 70-year-old lady who has this white intumescent cataract. I don't anticipate any issues during the surgery. The surgery is scheduled under topical anesthesia as is a routine for most of my patients. And IV sedation is not a common practice in my part of the world. Uh, my plan is to do a two-stage rexus in this eye. To begin with, I realize that the patient is not so cooperative. She is moving her eyes a lot. But I thought she is just anxious and usually these patients just settle down once we assure them and once we are in few minutes in the surgery. So I was confident that she would be fine and I continued. I performed the initial small rexus, no issues, but she still continues to move her eyes and I am not successful in reassuring and to keep looking straight into the eyes. So now I begin decompressing the back. I'm using the phaco tip uh, in cortex mode to aspirate all the uh, swollen cortex and to decompress the back and I achieved that. In most situations, the patient usually settles down by this time and with the left hand, the eye can usually be controlled well enough. I was hoping to achieve that. But this patient was still continuing to move her eyes quite a lot. I decide to stop now. And I'm injecting 0.5 ml of lignocaine subconjunctivally, hoping that uh, this would help me out. Now I need to go ahead and enlarge the rexus. The patient is still continuing to move the eye that is at my back of my hand. I'm trying to stabilize the globe with the forceps. And at this point I realize that the forceps is also not working quite well as I would desire. So I'm distracted by these two issues here but I continue to proceed with my surgery. Now to add on to the difficulties the pupil has come down compromising the visibility. So with these three issues not under my control in a very perfect way, I still proceed with the rexus enlargement. And in a moment I realize I have lost control over the rexus and it has extended. Now I try the rescue maneuver from the side port. But in vain. Of course it was too late. I refill the chamber with OVD and I make a nick at the tone flap with a micro scissors. And then trim it with the forceps. So now we have a situation here, an extended rexus, small pupil with an anxious patient with moving eyes. At this stage, I just step back, pause and then analyze and try to address each of these issues. To begin with, I decide to give post-receptance anesthesia. A small peritomy is made in the inferior middle quadrant. One ml of lignocaine is injected and I hope to have better kinesi with this. The next issue. 
Should I continue with FACO with an extended rexus and a small pupil to complicate it? Now since I expected the nucleus to be soft, I decided to go ahead with the FACO, but I need to deal with the pupil first. Seeing well is the most fundamental aspect of any surgery and to see well is to do well. I decide to go in with iris hooks in this case since it gives me the maximum dilation which is critical in such situations so that I can have a close watch on the peripheral aspect of the tone anterior capsule edge during emulsification. But it's going to take an additional 10 minutes to put these hooks in but I believe it's worth it. A tip on insertion of these hooks. I prefer to make these incisions quite posteriorly, actually much beyond the posterior limbus. One can call it scleral in fact. The advantage by using this technique is it prevents the tenting up of the iris when we pull the hooks. Typically I usually use only 4 hooks but in this case I am using the 5th one as well uh, specifically in the quadrant of the capsular tear extension since this is the most important part which I would want to always visualize during the process of emulsification. Time to FACO. Well, the principles of no hydro, minimal nucleus rotation, and very gentle maneuvers during nucleus division along with uh, the constant maintaining of the equilibrium of the antechamber during surgery is to be followed during nucleus management. I am creating a central deep trench initially as I usually do in my slightly denser cataracts. This helps me to get a good hold on the substance of the nucleus and then the vertical chop is done. I am as gentle as possible during lateral separation just to minimize the stress on the tone and recapture edge. Once the first fragment is chopped, it is pulled out of the bag to be emulsified at a plane slightly anterior to the pupillary plane. This is the rule I follow while performing FACO and I with discontinuous rexus. After the chop, I get the first fragment out of the bag, so it creates a space within the bag which would indirectly reduce the stress on the tone flap during further nucleus manipulation. The second fragment is also pulled out of the bag and then emulsified above the pupillary plane. Now this creates good space within the bag, which is actually a good thing. Before coming out, I inject OVD to ensure that the chamber does not shallow. Maintaining the chamber dynamics is so much important in such scenario. I am rotating the nucleus at this stage with the bag being half empty. Because the bag is empty, this step is relatively safe now. The process of dividing the nucleus into smaller fragments is continued. and eventually all the fragments are emulsified. I am closely observing the behavior of the flap during the procedure. It's critical. An averted flap which is fluttering is a good sign and on the contrary, where the flap becomes very stiff and bows down posteriorly usually indicates the posterior extension of the tear and is quite ominous. Under good visualization, the emulsification is completed safely. Now is the time to aspirate the cortex. O 
OVD is placed in the bag and intraocular lens is gently manipulated into the bag. With the haptics being oriented 90 degrees to the direction of the anterior capsular tear. Time to remove the hooks. They are removed one by one. That's it, the case is done. Now, this is the next day picture. These are small sphincter tears at the pupillary margin, but the pupil size is quite small and is very much acceptable. Patient was happy and I was relieved. Now, few important lessons to learn from this case. Taking the right call at the right time is a skill which needs to be mastered by every surgeon based on having a thorough understanding of the prevailing situation, the surgeon's skill sets, his experience and applying lots of common sense. Mastering the art of making the right and timely decisions are as important as mastering the surgical skills with your hands. Hence, I believe the surgery is done more with your mind rather than with the hands. If I could go back and critic myself, so these are the things. To begin with, I should have used the posterior septinus anesthesia the moment I realized that the eye movements are significantly more. Number two, the forceps was not perfect. I realized that I should have stopped and asked to get a new pair rather than getting distracted about it. Pupil had come down now. Probably there is an opportunity to consider using pupil expansion device. Number four, realize that the rexus is slightly going away. I should have stopped, put in OVD and try to complete the rexus from a different angle through one of the side ports. Probably that would have prevented the rexus from extending. Well, once the rexus went out, I took all the right decisions, which I am proud of. I used iris hooks, ensured good visualization, followed the right technique of emulsifying the nucleus, and eventually these things resulted in an excellent outcome for the patient which was indistinguishable from a routine one. So let us learn the art of being in the present which will enhance our skills of taking the right decision at the right time. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.